Hello, everybody. Andy Jacob here with the .com Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. I have a great show. I've been waiting for this show for a couple of weeks. You know, we love publishers. We love people that are doing great things. We love creative people. I mean, we talk to them all the time, and something came across our desk recently that we were just blown away by. We saw a comic book, and it's so cool. It was so awesome to get a, a copy of it. It was called Battle Cats. And, and when we looked at it, we saw the graphic design. We saw the story. We saw the editorial behind the comic book. I know it's kind of interesting as an entrepreneur to be in the publishing space, but we have a CEO on the show today that's creating an amazing independent publishing house. And his name is Mr. Mark London. And of course, he is the CEO and Chief Creative Officer at Mad Cave Studios. He has a great announcement. They recently acquired a kind of a, a legendary company as well. There's so many great things. Uh, Mark was nice enough to send me some of the comics in a PDF format that I just got addicted to basically overnight. So, Mark, I'm so excited to have you on the show. Welcome to the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. So, it's so great to be here. Uh, I was actually excited on, uh, to, to be able to just like join you and, and talk a little bit about Mad Cave and everything that we're I doing. I love it. I love it so much. Mad Cave is super cool. I love it. I mean, the Battle Cats comic book that you sent over to me, I read the number one and uh, uh, the cover is so cool and the characters are amazing. But let's get into it because, you know, this is an <laughs> entrepreneurial journey. This is a business that you're building before we get started, let's let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet. It's sort of made .com Magazine famous. Tell us about Mad Cave Studios, and then we'll get into it. Awesome. Uh, Mad Cave Studios was a long-time dream that I had uh, for the longest time. For some personal reasons, I wasn't able to study uh, what I really wanted to study, which was uh, creative writing, filmmaking, becoming a producer, all those, all those uh, good things that that kids dream um, when they're growing up. Um, and at the time, I was also addicted to animation and uh, video games and movies, and of course, comic books. Um, so I kind of did my thing, um, but one day I just got got sick and tired of it, and I decided to to see if, if I could really. Um, made my dream possible. So I, I spoke with my wife and she said like, okay, why don't we, why don't we pursue this? If you're going to do it, I mean, do it. So I was like, okay, um, thank you for your support. That, that means the world to me. So I kind of like had the green light and I decided to, to just, uh, it was, again, it was a personal project, but it was supposed to be something that I wanted to do for myself. Um, but we started like, putting all the pieces together. And when we started building the website and everything, I remember that the people that, that were helping us to build the website were like, Hey, I think that you actually have a, a business here. So I was like, okay, this is very cool. Very interesting. So, so we started like organizing what a business plan would look like. What, what five years of publishing, what hiring the right people would accomplish us, like what would be the trajectory and also uh, like how much money we were actually going to require to actually pulled this through. So one thing led to another. And, and then we started meeting like-minded folks that were actually into comic books, that were actually into graphic design, that really, really had a passion for this stuff. And, uh, and without knowing, I mean, we actually had a publisher. We had a lot of, of, of painful experiences at first because we were learning uh, a lot of the processes. But, but I get that at the end of the day, that's what experience is really all about. Uh, learning from your mistakes, trying to push the envelope. And again, meeting the right people, putting the right people on the bus that actually can help you carry the torch. Yeah, I love it. You put the right people on the team to carry the torch. Of course, you have a great group of not only designers, but writers as well. Uh, you're integral in all of that. And of course, when we think about it and we think about graphic design, I mean, the for years and for decades, the, the comic book industry has really led the way with so much great graphic design. So many graphic designers that are legendary have come out of the comic book space, as you know, and, and it's very mm -hmm. wonderful to watch. Now, when we think about it and we think about comic books, you know, from the periphery, 
It may look like, hey, it's a comic book, but really this has become a multi-million, a multi-billion dollar business because these comic books end up turning into something else. And they are very fascinating the way that a comic book evolves, Mark. It's very, very interesting. Let's talk about it a little bit. And for the people watching the show, we're going to be sliding on some of the comic books and some of the graphic design that Mark and his team at Mad Cave Studios has become very, very famous for already. And we want to get into this acquisition in just a minute, Mark. But before we do, let's talk about this. Let's talk about your team. I mean, you have a talented team of designers. You do some of the writing yourself. I mean, I, that that Battle Cats, I saw that your name was on, you know, as the person that, you know, wrote, helped write or wrote the first Battle Cats. What's it like working with graphic designers and writers you know you think that they have sort of that left brain right brain thing where you know maybe they're leaning toward one half of the brain more than the other is it easy to keep them all kind of working in the same direction or sometimes does it get a little challenging well uh sometimes it gets a little challenging because uh, like you said and you uh, Making a comic book is, is not as easy as, uh, as some people might think. Uh, it's, it's, it's basically just a, um, a line of production, if you will, because you do have, you do have your designers, but it, actually the integral part of a comic book are the artists, which actually are doing the drawings for the book. Uh, then you have the colorists. You might have the line artists because, I mean, artists could just draw pencil, on pencil and then you would probably just need or in some cases you might need an inker that actually just goes over the traces of pencils and then you would have a colorist that actually applies the color and then you have a letter that actually comes in and then you have the graphic designer which actually wraps it all and puts uh, the logo in place and put the, the credential and then and that's called like a, a when they dress the book uh, so it's it, it's a lot of people that actually get involved in this, but actually coordinating um, all, all those all those talented people, um, they're done by the wonderful team of editorial that Matt Cave Studios has, which is a, a wonderful team, which is led at this moment by Chris Fernandez, and we, we have Chaz, we have Lauren, we have James, uh, we have Joe, we have Brian. I mean, th those are the people that, that actually like coordinate all these different uh, balls that are throwing in the air and then sort of making the process flow and, and make it wonderful. So they're the real lion tamers. <laughs> I love it. I but, love it. I love it, Mark. You know, your, your graphics just pop off the page. I mean, it's remarkable the type of coloration and the type of distinct sort of approach and, and unique sort of um, color palette that your team has. Let's talk about a little bit. When we look at a comic, let's get a little mm -hmm. geeky. How long does it take from start to finish? Does the idea start first or do the graphics start first? Uh, how does all of that work? Because you read one of the comics and you have to say to yourself as an entrepreneur like I am, I mean, how long did this take? Because it's gorgeous and beautiful. And what's the process? <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Well, uh, I mean, there, there's so many ways that you can approach this, but sometimes, I mean, if, if you're a writer, um, for example, in my case, um, I can draw. I can draw. I mean, figure sticks. I mean, the, those that that's a, that's my my skill right there w w in regards to drawing. So I would basically just have to write everything. So you would start either with a scene, you would start out with an outline, you would start with with a concept, some characters. Um, and putting all on paper. Then when you start getting your artist involved, that's when he starts bringing all your words to life and giving this character, I mean, the distinctive um, characteristics or they, they appear bigger than life. So th that's why it's a collaboration and it's so important. But some, some artists, they also write. So sometimes, I mean, their own ideas might just come completely fleshed out and they might be able to do their concepts and their characters and their beautiful settings like right off the bat. So it, it's, it's so different how you approach it or who approaches it depending on the level of skill. But going back to your question, I mean, sometimes, I mean, a comic book can be um, a year in the making because not, not only, not only you start doing like all your planning ahead of time, like, okay, how many issues is it going to be? How many pages? Uh, what are the different arcs? So for people that are not familiar with comic books and you start doing arcs, think about this in movies 
when you have uh, when you go to Netflix or, or Amazon Prime or Hulu and you start having your seasons. So an arc might be like a season. So you plan for five seasons. Okay, so this is going to be like six issues, 24 pages each. And then you start actually like pulling everything depending on on how much story you want, how contained you want it to, to be. If it's going to be a maxi series, it's going to be a mini series. Or sometimes, I mean, you go in in our case, for example, for Maverick, which is our young adult line, uh, we have books that are self-contained stories and they might be like 200 pages. And some of those projects, they, they might even take two years in in and just in the in the making process, it can just take two years. Wow, it's so interesting. Of course, you mentioned the line. So let's get into that because recently you had a big announcement that you acquired the kids comic pioneer paper cuts. And let's talk Correct. about how that sort of sets up the lineup. So what do we mean by a lineup? Is it by age? Is it by interest? What's the lineup look like for Mad Cave right now? Correct. I mean, right now, I mean, Mad Cave would be your line for grownups or would be your imprint for grownups. Then Maverick would be your imprint for young adults. And then Paper Cuts, it's, it's your middle grade line. So what we do is we try to segment different markets within each imprint and each target market has to be actually approached differently depending on their needs, their wants. That's why when you're building a publisher, it's also very important to have a robust marketing team along everything that you're doing. Like in our case, I mean, our, our wonderful director, uh, Alison Pond, I mean, she, she has been savvy enough to try to put like all these different imprints and highlighting them. Uh, so they resonate with the different audiences. So what we wanted to do is basically just like, try to target different markets, but also when you're working with middle grade titles, uh, basically what you're doing is that you're, you're nurturing the readers of the future. So you, you're starting to getting them into some, some comic book aspects that a lot of people might not be familiar with. But if you start showing or giving kids the ability to read and and make them dream and, and get excited about the, the stories. I mean, they're going to be, they're, they're going to be avid readers and they're going to be future customers of your lines as they grow older. So that's what we've been trying to, to actually do with behind our, our, our business strategy. Yeah, I love it. It's so great. Let's talk about strategy. You mentioned business strategy. I love the lines. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, when when we talk about comic books or, you know, we talk about live streaming or, you know, they have uh, Indie Comics Week and they have all kinds of, you know, things that you participate in. You're a go-to kind of a guy, a go-to company. What's next mm -hmm. for the company? What's next for Mad Cave? Where does all of this go? Is there a next evolution of Mad Cave when you mm -hmm. look out into the future? Absolutely. Um, that's a great question, Andy. Right now, I mean, what we're trying to do is, is get all the different imprints organized for paper cuts. I mean, we got um, Rex Ogle, which is going to be like kind of being the, the, the warden of that, uh, of that little asylum, just, just in charge of trying to produce and, and, and publish, I mean, the best middle grade books uh, that anybody has seen. I, I know that is a tall order. And when you talk to different companies, it's like, okay, what is it that you want to be? But really what we want to be is we want to be a publisher that matters, a publisher that in five years we've grown so much that a lot of people uh, are really paying attention and are really consuming our content. Because a lot of people that actually work for the company is because they love everything that they do. Um, we have our vice president of business development, which is Mark Kirwin. He's been trying to push the company also uh, take it international, getting more distribution. I mean, our director of sales, Kurt Nelson, he's very, he's very um, excited about the possibility of trying to translate your works to, uh, into other languages. So you can really try to go across the board and, and trying to actually maximize your potential and your business. And uh, I mean, I know that this is no easy feat for a publisher, Chris Fernandez, which actually gets like thrown content, but also dealing with publishing, Gandhi, it's, it's, um, you have to be very careful with your, with your economies of scale. And, and, and that's really something that, that is actually going to make or break your company. And that is something that we are trying to push so we can deliver a lot of competitive content 
And like, like how we say in the business, a story is king. So I love we it. are trying I to come it. up with the best, best stories out there. That's yeah, it. I love it. The story is king. I love that so much. Think, speaking of that, let's talk about a story. Let's bring the viewers inside the mind of Mark London for a minute. You told me a little bit about one of your comics, one of your offerings called Nottingham. And I love the idea behind Nottingham. Uh, it's kind of cool. So let's let's get inside it just yeah. for a minute. Tell us sort of the high level about what Nottingham is all about. And so we could understand the mind of a creative and what mm -hmm what the whole idea behind the comic series is. Mm -hmm. Nottingham, um, it's a very successful um, title of ours, which actually caught a lot of people off guard. And the beauty behind Nottingham is that Mad Cave Studios has, has like really established or launched something called Italian Search every year, Andy. And what we do is we try to um, give people that um, love this stuff, whether it be writers or artists, and they have never been published, uh, the opportunity to, to actually get published. And we started in 2018, and we are the ones who decide who wins and, and, and who actually gets published. And Nottingham, going back to Nottingham's success, it caught everyone off guard because it was actually written by one of our talent search winners and it's actually drawn by one of our talent search winners. So sometimes in this industry, um, a lot of people that, that have their trajectory and have a lot of uh, wins under the belt um, and, and nurture a fan base, uh, sure, sell the books and get the sales. But this, this story, Nottingham, was practically came out of the, the gate swinging. And, and it's from two unknowns that actually had so much potential and so much talent um, that it actually broke all the records for us. So I'm super proud and happy about that. Going back to your initial question, what is Nottingham? Well, it's, it's a spin on your Robin Hood take. So it's a, it's a darker take on Robin Hood, which a lot of people say, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it for anyone, but, but, but we begin the series or we begin the, the, the first station with the Nottingham's, um, the sheriff of Nottingham, um, looking for out for a murder. He, he's, he's actually a detective and he, he, he's trying to solve uh, a mystery. And then he, he's going to go through, through everything that we've known about Robin Hood. And he's going to meet this very cool characters, which are not what you've been used to knowing about Robin Hood, Robin Hood and all that stuff. But, but again, it's a super fun, cool take on uh, the Robin Hood mythos. Yeah, and the colorization is beautiful in the in the comic book, and yes. the covers are incredible. We'll put some of that up yeah. on the screen as well through the interview. Mark, let's talk about it a little bit. Let's let's talk about for the people that don't really get it. I mean, when when I was a kid, my parents loved for me to read anything I could get my hands on. I mean, whether it was magazines or comic books, and of course, you know, you mentioned that your system sort of gets the younger kids reading and then it gets them engaged and then they maybe move to the next level and the next level and it's a beautiful mm -hmm. way to go let's talk mm -hmm. about this just for a minute because people are all digitized now i mean people watching the show they might not get it when someone wants to read a nottingham or read one of the you know one of the speed republics or battle cats do they mm -hmm. actually get the comic book physically in the mail or do they read it online or both Okay. We, uh, again, the, the, you're absolutely right. I mean, the, the, the business is changing so fast. Um, but for some reason, I mean, comic book have always been um, a little bit of a niche. Um, uh, it's, it's more been for collectors, for diehard fans, for, for people that, that actually have grown with, up with this stuff and, and, and that we love it. Um, so I, I just think that the, the medium has refused to actually transcend to the digital side of things, as we've seen with movies, as we have seen with video games and even music. But you can get comic books um, digital. You, you can read it on your iPad. You can read it on your Kindle. That's that's what Amazon, they, they, they have a platform called uh, Comixology, which you can get all your comic books uh, digitally. What we do is that we also have, through our website, we do offer that option to the consumer. And what we do is we either offer it digital and then like at the end of the series, when the first start ends, we can ship them the trade paperback 
everything collected and they actually pay for both things, but they don't have to actually go to a physical store and they pick up the book. But on the other hand, comic books are also really, we also rely on the retailers for us. I mean, the comic book shops, the mom and pop stores, they're, they're very, very important to everything that we're doing into the medium. So um, I encourage everyone to go out, to visit the comic book shops, to support, I mean, the local economy and actually buy comic books uh, from them. And believe it or not, comic book places are so fun because you, you might meet, I mean, like-minded folks like yourself, which enjoy and, and really love the, the, this type of stuff that, that you're reading and you're looking for, even if it's for escapism, just to try to identify with a story or, or just looking at the pretty art. Yeah, I love it. It is an art form. Of course, we have a, a local uh, comic book store. And on Saturdays, I love driving by there and because on Saturdays, all the visitors, they dress up as their famous and favorite, yes. you know, uh, comic book heroes. <laughs> and of course, uh, something interesting. And I want to talk about your entrepreneurial journey. I know you've only cut out a certain amount of time, Mark. This has been a great interview and really fascinating bringing us inside. Uh, we just the people at .com magazine, we have a little bit of a, re of a request because, of course, you sure. know, we know in the United States, I was just speaking to an expert in, in, uh, in animal nutrition, and she told me there's 90 million dogs in the United States and 70 million children. So our big request from the team at .com magazine is we want you to consider battle dogs instead of battle cats next time. <laughs> we need battle dogs. Now, Mark, um, I want to talk a little bit about something that I find very interesting. Behind you over your shoulder, there's a beautiful painting of, of Batman. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, prior to, you know, our call, we had a pre-call and you told me that your wife painted that. And, and you, in, at the beginning of the show, you also said that, you know, your wife was very, very um, supportive of you. And we love that so much. And by the way, when I was a kid, Batman did not look like that Batman on your wall. He was a little different. <laughs> Adam West Batman was a little yeah. different back in the early yes. 70s, late 60s. That shows how old I am, of course. Let's talk about it. how important <laughs> as an entrepreneur is that support from your family, from your wife to keep on pushing every day? Mm -hmm. I think that it's a, the most important aspect of being an entrepreneur. I mean, by, by being an entrepreneur and, and just trying to go into in, into entrepreneurship because uh, you can be stubborn <laughs> up to a certain point and you can try to just like, I don't care about the world. I don't care about anything that surrounds me. This is my idea. I love it. I'm going to make it. But if you have the support of your friends, family, your wife, your loved ones, the people that you care about. I mean, they're going to make everything easier because uh, the, an, an, the entrepreneur's journey is not an easy one. It's a lonely one. It's a hard one. Um, I know that we were speaking about this, Andy, um, prior to, to this interview. And it's like you, you basically are uh, your own boss. There's no uh, hours during the week. You have to triple the, the amount of energy that you're putting into your own business. Uh, you're always thinking about your business. You're obsessing about your business. So it's, it's not easy and you need to, uh, to try to establish a healthy balance. And when your family and your loved ones are on board, I mean, well, that makes everything a little bit better because at first everything is going to be very dark and gloomy and uh, did i do the the, the right choice did, did i actually uh go in the, the should i stay at the safe route um but for me at least there was no other choice i had to follow my dream i had to follow my passion and and i really prefer to be the head of a mice than to be i mean the tail of a lion so that's 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 how i do it I love it. What a great quote that is. That could be the name of your TED Talk or the name of the book, or maybe you put that into one of your comics. I love it. Mark, yeah. let's talk about it. Before I let you go, I have to ask this question about entrepreneurship. You know, we have younger entrepreneurs watching the show. They're sure. starting out. They're maybe having a tough time battling it every day. What type of advice, Mark, can you give to the younger entrepreneurs watching the show about what it takes to keep on pushing during a tough time? For me, it's getting the right people on the bus, getting the, your right team, getting people that are actually going to have your back and that they know and they understand what you're doing. And also try to simulate your plan ahead of time, trying to put everything in writing, 
not just like okay i'm gonna throw myself out of the out of the plane without a parachute try to see i mean what the different routes or or what are the different venues that, that you're going to pro- possibly overcome try to come up with different scenarios whether there be uh, success scenarios or where there be chaos scenarios but at least that it makes you think and flesh out like every possible outcome and try to endure get the right people next to you so they can actually help you in in difficult times and 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 yeah and push forward yeah i love it it's all about the team surround yourself with people that have that same passion that you do and when the going gets tough, you know, there's that old saying, the tough get going. And of course, I think that's what you're saying at a very high level. Listen, Mm -hmm. Mark, this is awesome. I'm so happy to have brought you on the show to get an inside look at what you're doing at Mad Cave Studios. Of course, you know, maybe one day, you know, we'll see either, you know, Nottingham or Battle Cats or Speed Republic or one of the other offerings that you have, you know, come up uh, on the big screen. You just never know. I mean, you've got a fast growing company and the new acquisition is really, really remarkable, of course, with what you have done with Paper Cut. So this has been a great, great interview. We're going to bring you back on the show and uh, highlight some more of the new offerings that you have at the at the company and mark this has just been a great interview thank you so much for coming on the dot-com magazine entrepreneur spotlight series today thank you andy i'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity and then hopefully we can do this again 